Hello everyone, I'm Miguel Sanchez, and welcome to the World of Blocks! And this one is going to be the longest extra story you've ever heard of before, because this one is going to blow you away. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for it. So let's begin right now, we're not going to waste any more time here. If you haven't seen our, our previous song, which was Getting the Point Across, the epilogue, I'll leave you later on the top corner of the screen, you can see I'm still waiting for you right now. For now, let's get started! That's right, it's time for Embracing the Darkness, our, our extra story, our seventh extra story here on the channel. First, First was was lighting up the night. Then general blocks. Then gave the point. Uh, then how to cover your uh, your evil boss. Then how to cover your amigo. And then revising the twenty. And then our most re and then most recently a teacher's wish. Now this one is embracing the darkness. So thank you for coming. It's gonna be our longest story ever yet. Our longest extra story here on the world block. You can see this Octonani on the pictures here. And we're showing you the origins of darkness's minions and how they've joined darkness and how each each every single one of them have joined darkness. So, without further ado, let's begin. But before we do, credit goes to everything inside the panel TV art. He was the one who created all of this. Not me. It wasn't me. It was him. So thank you, Infinite Sunny for the reach of the series. We're going to check it out. I'll leave them down below in the video description. There is this page down below. Thank you for thank you for the credit, Infinite Sunny Pit. One final thing. Warning, Larry Box is a property of Blues Animation Studios, Alpha Blocks Limited, and the BBC, which of course is the British Broadcasting Corporation. No copyright infringement is intended. I owe nothing. You have been warned. Thank you so much. And now, sit back and enjoy the show, everyone. The World of Blocks, Embracing the Darkness. A blue blur sped through NVIDIA. Sam was having a blast running around, going too fast for any, uh, for any other block to spot. Eventually, she stopped and checked the time by, gl by glancing at the sun's position in the sky. She had plenty of time before her day with light was to, ha was to happen that evening, so she decided to visit Music Land, her favorite place in NVIDIA. She was in Mudland right now, but thanks to her... Speed, she made it to Music Land in seconds. Little did she know that another element block had just formed here, and not a friendly one. As soon as Silent, as soon as Silence was bombarded with all the noises and abilities of Music Land, he instantly knew uh, knew that he hated this place. The sound was his enemy, and he would destroy it. What was <laughs> when a blue block with a speaker on her head, her head dashed into uh, uh, into view. Silence realized what, who she was. I picked up a sharp rock to, to attack with, to attack her with. With a complete lack of noise on his side, he leaped at sound, who turned around and saw him just in time to avoid being fatally stabbed. However, Silas still managed to leave a nasty cut on her left arm. Sound shrieked and sped away, and Silas scowled. He knew that the, he knew that sound was fast, but her, but her super speed still frustrated him. Then, out of, uh, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a black tentacle, and his eyes widened. Darkness stepped into view and grinned at silence. Greetings, I'm Darkness. I saw you attack sound there. Let me guess, you're supposed to be silence, aren't you? Silence nodded a quiet yes. Hey, if you team up with me, then maybe we kill then maybe we could kill sound together. Darkness suggested. Silence wanted to tell him that he'd rather kill sound himself. But not only he was he was mute, but he realized that he would have a better chance if he teamed up with someone else. So he nodded and darkness screamed. I have an idea of, of how to get rid of not only sound, but all the other blocks as well. Darkness began to explain. If things go according to plan, Nvidia won't stand a chance against us. X -X -X. What happened to your arm? Light asked light ask, light ask when she saw sound that evening, staring at her bandaged wound. So it was attacking me with a sharp rock, Sound explained. Who was it? I don't know. It happened in Music Land, and while he looked like a music block, he didn't have a glass case. Whoever it was, whoever it was, I'm so sorry it happened, Light sympathetically told her girlfriend, then recalled. You know, Darkness attacked me this morning. Again? Why won't that jerk just leave you alone? Complained Sound. Speaking of Darkness, I'm worried about his new minion. What if he gets more of them? Oh, please, Sal said dismissively. Who else would be more desperate enough to join him? Six, six. One day in Conan, Gray was walking by himself, looking for a nice place to paint a picture. Maybe he'd go over to Neverland and paint with Seventeen, who he grow quite who he grow quite fond of him of since their first meeting. Since Gray lacked confidence in his own abilities, he considered Seventeen the best artist in video. Not, not that he had a crutch on, or uh, to, he had a crutch or anything, right? All of a sudden, so Gray found himself suspended upside down. 
This would have been stored in a truck, and he and he pathetically flailed about trying to try to escape. He heard somebody laughing and realized who he was. Apollaka, please get me down from here. All right, said Apollaka. She pulled out a dagger and threw it at the rope that that had caught Ray, causing the the, the, the melancholy recover block to drop to the ground. Ow! Gray got up and rode his head, wincing at the throbbing pain. That wasn't nice at all! Sorry! Apollaka's tone made it clear that she wasn't so sorry at all. Then she scowled at uh, then she scowled as she heard a voice from behind her. Knock it off, Apollaka! The white color block turned around to see the red glaring at her. Nobody likes your mean tricks! <laughs> I'm only trying to have fun! Apollaka replied before jumping up to dislodge her dagger from the tree she threw at it. Your, your fun can be dangerous, you know, said Red. Why can't you be more like White? This made Apollaka angry. Seriously, do you always have to compare me with her? I'm no pretty little angel, Red winced. Sorry, I should have struck uh, I should have struck that the nerve. But still, you need to keep your mischief in check, as Red went to make sure Gray was alright, Apollaka sought off. It, it, it wasn't fair. Nobody ov uh, nobody ever unfavorably compared these those terrible suits over and over to, to the core two. So why was so why was she expected to act like the core white? Exact six. Later on, Apple Luck was sitting on by Rainbow Lake, thinking to herself, why did she even stay in Carland? Clearly, she wasn't welcome th there, but where else could she go? She stood up and was about to leave, but just then, she found herself face to face with somebody who made her uh, who made her jump back in shock. It was Diaz, the robbers who made the news last month for, mm, mm, for destroying the piece of flatland and attempting to do the same to the rest of the video. As bad as Apollaka could be, she asked. She knew better than to be seen with one of Tartus's minions. What are you doing here? She asked. I've become aware of your antics, Diaz answered. Have you been spying on me? Uh, no. Diaz quickly moved on. So, you like causing trouble, right? Well, yes, but maybe you can stir up some trouble for darkness. What? I can't. Do you want to keep being shunned by... The other cuddle blocks to constantly be compared to the silly angel. Let's be honest, me and Darkness are the only ones who can appreciate your brand of mischief. Apple Lucka was silent for a few moments, then replied with, What will happen to me once I turn Darkness? You will gain the opportunity to rise above the other cuddle blocks and put them in their place. Especially White. These last two words were what swayed Apple Lucka. Okay, I better not end up regretting. We're going to this though. XXX. The sweet melodies that usually flow through musical land were suddenly disrupted by a hideous sound coming out of a piccolo that a T was desperately trying to play. The piccolo wriggled out of his grasp and dropped, dropped to the floor, getting up to glare at him. I'm definitely, I'm definitely not the one for you, goggles. The piccolo said, a noise clear, a noise clear in his voice. But, but. But I've already tried so many instruments, Goggles complained. Every music blog was expected to bond with a living instrument and become each other's lifelong companions. But the fox-like tea, fox tea had been strangely unlucky so far, not being able to play any instrument properly. It's not that he wasn't making any efforts to learn, but playing your special instrument was supposed to come naturally. At first, brass instruments had, uh, had seemed the obvious choice for somebody who came to life wearing brass goggles, but he had no successes in that department. He was terrible at all the strings and keyboards too, and this piccolo was not nothing was the last woodwind instrument available. Now to move on to percussion. Now to move on to percussion. Sucks, sucks. He sucked at percussion too. Not even the tambourine would cooperate with him. His situation really didn't seem hopeless. Uh, don't give up," the Zion phone. He had, he had tried. He had just tried out. Told him encouragingly, "You'll find the one soon." However, Goggles wasn't listening to her comforting words. All he felt was bitterness and anger. Uh, bitterness and anger. How was it so easy for every other music block to find the right instrument, and yet he failed at? He failed at everything he tried. It just wasn't fair. 
Seeing that Goggles wasn't responding, the telephone grew and worried. Hello? Please, you can't lose hope. I've tried everything I can, Goggles shouted, standing up and stomping towards his line of phone, who backed away upon seeing his terrifyingly angry expression. I tried brass, keyboards, strings, movements, and percussion was my last hope. Not even a microphone, boombox, or a DJ stand will listen to me. Please calm down, the Zyphal begged, but Goggles, uh, now harboring a resentment against all instruments, proceeded to do the unthinkable. He picked up a rock and began to bash it into the xylophone, breaking her wooden frame and sending her keys flying everywhere. Once the deed was done, Goggles stood there, breathing heavily as he realized what, uh, what he just did. He had committed murder. He dropped the rock and fled the scene as the xylophone's soul rose up. Unlike Black Souls, hers was a little was, was a little dot of light. She heard screaming and could see me and Vicky standing there, st staring in horror at at the at her broken corpse. What happened? cried me. The xylophone's soul floated over to the music block and her violin. It's me, the xylophone. Goggles did this to me. What? cried Vicky. But why? He was he was angry after failing to play me. He picked up a rock and bashed me to death. Me and Vicky's eyes began to water. Well, we'll go to Iris, me promised. If she can bring the plug, if she can bring Buck's life, then she can surely do the same with instruments. She cupped the little soul in her hands and started running with, with Vicky close behind her. Six, six. Goggles sat on the rock, tears falling out of his eyes. Now he was doomed. When the other music blocks found out about this, He'd be shunned, and no instrument would want to bond with him, even if he was able to play one. He buried his face in his hands, regretting what he'd done and wondering what to do next. None of this would have happened if the instruments in music land were alive. Why was that even the case? There was, uh, there were plenty of perfectly good and enemy instruments in the other lands. Just to hear the voice. Hey there, he jumped a bit. That his eyes widened when he saw when he saw who it was. A light blue rhombus stood behind him, stood before him, and he knew that this was the same rhombus who had who had been declared an enemy of Athenia. Your Diaz, he gasped. I should really be talking to you. Then who are you going to talk to? She countered. I saw what happened with that xylophone. With that xylophone, Goggles' pupils shrunk. You mean you saw me? Yes, it looks like you have nowhere to go now. The tea hesitated. Do you know where I should go? There's always the option of joining darkness. No, I can't do such a thing. You've already, you've already committed murder. You've already committed murder. Diaz pointed out. And besides, why wouldn't you want to live in a place where everybody is expected to have an ungrateful instrument for a companion? Think about it. What have the, what have the instruments ever done for the music for their music blocks? They only bond with them so they have somebody to play them. There's no reason for them to be alive at all. They could be completely inanimate objects, and it would it wouldn't make a difference. Goggles realized that she had a point. While the music blocks seemed to have genuine bonds with the with the instruments with their instruments, the latter really couldn't do anything for the former. That a regular instrument couldn't. What was the point of their sent sentience? Then again, he could ask the same question about everybody in Infinia, including Infinity him herself. But you know, still, he truly did have nobody else to turn to. He stood up and took Diaz's arm. But lead the way to darkness, XXX. In Numberland, Iris had succeeded in restoring the Xylophone's body, but a, hef but a heavy sense of dread and horror hung in the air. Iris paced back and forth, trying and failing to keep calm while Infinity stared at the ground, trying to process the information me and Vicky had given. Infinity's first murderer, the ghost whispered. It was true. While blocks may have committed violence against each other in the past, nobody in Infinity had ever taken the life of another sentient being before. You, you mean to tell me that the that murder has... Has never happened in this world before? Iris asked in surprise. Everyone's souls 
Everybody's souls stick around after death, so there would be no point if any reason. But still, we need to find Goggles and punish him for this. I just hope th th this sort of thing doesn't become common. XXX. Loyal Fire was frustrated for several reasons. One was one was that she she was an offshoot Sunday, and therefore never got the same amount of attention as her core counterpart. Another reason was that nobody. Nobody paid attention to our attorney general. Come on! You do like, come on, you don't want to go see Calendar Kimmy with me? She was trying to convince Friday to to go flying with her. As she never got at least she never got to fly around with a buddy. I'm so sorry. Fly away right Papa Saturday and Sunday I hang out with her today. Friday apologized. Fine. Said it loyal said disappointing loyal fire. Maybe I could go go fly with you tomorrow. Friday suggested, not wanting her to be too upset. Okay, replied Loyal Fire. Then she noticed her his his worried expression. Hey, you look a bit tired. What? Oh, I'm fine. It's not like I've been up all night worrying about darkness planning his next move. No way, Friday lied awkwardly. Loyal Fire decided to just let him be. I'll go fly by myself for now. See ya! As she flew away to see Calder Kenny on her own, she couldn't help but still feel burned, bummed out. If only she'd gotten to be the not to be the core Sunday instead of a beastly offshoot. Oh, how she wished to be part of something bigger. Soon she reached Calder Canyon, where she, which sat between Friday and March's territories, and was considered a, uh, as a, a part of of both weak land and month land, she soared downwards and looked at the fluttery through the canyon and feeling and feeling the rush of adrenaline as she zipped around every rock that stood in her way. This was a nice place to go when she needed to be alone with her thoughts as a few blocks ever went inside the canyon. At last she landed on a flat stone and sat by herself to think. She didn't get to do a lot of thinking before a rock suddenly dislodged itself from above. She saw it coming too late and landed on her wing as she tried to get away. Loyal Fire let out a gut-wrenching shriek as she felt her bones being crushed. She cried out for help as loudly as possible, her voice echoing through the canyon. However, it would prove to be to, to be futile as the. Uh, as not only was no other block nearby, nearby, but Friday, who had who had super hearing, had become so exhausted from his lack of rest that he fell asleep, much to the amusement of Saturday and Sunday. As the hours passed, loyal fires shouting died down, her voice becoming a bit hoarse. Now all she could do was wave for the wave for help. But 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 would help ever come? Did anybody care enough to rescue her? Not even, not even Friday had shown up. Soon evening came, and Loyal Fire gave up hope, hope of rescue. At least dying down here would allow her to her soul to go find Iris and get her body restored. Still, did she even want to go back to the blocks who consistently, consistently brushed her, her and ignored her? Just then, Loyal Fire spotted a pair of eyes in the darkness. Who are you? She asked, her voice having a whole hopeful tone. Here, have you couldn't see me? You could say that. When the eyes owner revealed herself, Loyal Fire was terrified. T.S. The Sunday struggled to free herself, herself knowing what, what, the, what this rumpus was capable of. Relax. I'm here to make your life better, T.S. promised. You've been ignored by your whole existence, haven't you? What? How do, how do you know about that? I have my ways. If you come with me, Darkness will make sure nobody brushes you off ever again. No way! I loyal fire looked down at her trap ring. Do I even have a choice here? You two, replied Diaz. You either come with me or stay down here. Loyal fire thought about it. Would the would it the, the, would it be really worth going back to Weakland where she felt like nothing? Perhaps during Diaz would be the best decision she ever made. All right, she finally decided. If this is the only way to get some respect, then so be it. Six, six. Seeker's name was very appropriate. He was always he was always seeking knowledge, new opportunities, and most of all, power. He even he even got so far as to begin practicing the dark arts in secret. 
Uh, let's see here. Every night he snuck away to a hidden grotto in order to own his skills in dark magic. As far as he knew, none, uh, none of the other element blocks uh, had, uh, had ever come to this area. So, uh, so he felt confident that that he wouldn't get caught. However, one night this changed for anticipation and begun to notice him seeking and sneaking off each evening and grow suspicious. He followed Seeker to his grotto and witnessed him casting his dark spells and became shocked and horrified that one of his offshoots was doing this. As soon as Seeker started to leave, started to leave he found himself face to face with his core counterpart. Care to explain why I saw you doing dark magic? Anticipation demanded. His usual carefree excitement replaced with a mix of concern and betrayal. A anticipation! Seeker knew he was screwed, but he was but he still tried to keep calm. Oh, that was nothing, just a little illusion. Ha ha ha! Anticipation narrowed his eyes. That didn't look like an illusion to me. I Seeker suddenly shot out a blast of dark magic at anticipation, knocking the the illusion block backwards. Fine! Now that you've discovered the truth, I might as well take your soul! Realizing that he was in danger, Anticipation turned into Vigilance and, fell, and fought back with all of his might. Seeker switched to his Vigilance form and the two, as well, and the two blocks of the same emotion battled with Seeker using dark magic attacks and Vigilance using, using sheer brute force. Eventually, Seeker was tired out and Vigilance ended the fight with one last sucker punch. Seeker had lost the battle, but before Vigilance could detail him, he used the last of his strength to escape, turning into pure shadow and, and slinking away. He turned back to normal only when he was deep enough in the woods that he that he was sure anticipation would uh, that would have follow, that wouldn't follow him here. He sat by himself for a short while before he heard an excited voice. Wow, that was some battle! Seeker looked up to see the robots he recognized as DS, but instead of trying to flee, he instead greeted Seeker. He instead greeted her with a warm smile. Ah, must you must be that new mini of Tardis I've been hearing about. That's right, confirmed DS. Since you already seem to be very skilled in the use of dark magic, now how about you? Of course, I'll enjoy Tardis. Diaz was caught off guard by his eagerness, as nobody before him had been so willing to join her side. Oh, welcome to the tea then, Seeker chuckled. chuckled. If we don't just help, I'm sure to, I'll be sure to defeat Vincelis in our next battle. XXX. Brainy was a true genius. However, his adventures never went, never went appreciated by the other star blocks. Even everybody was so stubborn, preferring their old-fashioned ways to his high-tech innovations. So why was it that they loved the revived Black Knight, but just like his machines, it was always the same. He wouldn't invent something new, and it would be rejected. One day he tried to invent a machine to help Boots, I know, Boots, um, herd his unruly sheep. It was a large mechanical wolf designed to scare the animals into submission, but the herdsman Constellation became angry at him for using such tactics, preferring to be... Gentle with his livestock. Yeah, like the sheep would ever be, would ever listen to him. Another time he tried to show off both Perseus and Hercules by inventing a robotic suit that would allow him to outperform the two heroes at any feat. But he tried to rescue Polaris from a ledge he got, he got himself stuck on. But, but no, but, but one of the hands of his suit had such a strong grip that the bear was almost crushed. Was almost crushed. Perseus and Hercules were so angry that he nearly injured the little teddy that they used their sword and club to destroy his prized creation. The final straw was when Brady created a submarine to show up. Argo, who was the future of, of Carnia, Pupius, Pupius, and Bella, he piloted the submarine and circled around the ship constellation, and it actually seemed that uh, that the both of them. We're having a good time until the core Delphinus got caught in the propeller of his submarine. She would have surely died if the Black Knight had hadn't spotted the incident and swooped in and swooped in to save her in the nick of time. At the worst, Brainy knew that he knew he was in severe trouble. Argo split back into Serena, into Serena, into Serena, Pupis, and Bella, 
so they could help the Venus to the hospital. After they were out of tr after they were out of sight, the Black Knight turned to Brainy with fury in his eyes. Why can't I see? Why can't you see that your inventions are doing more harm than good? The robot shouted at the inventor. You need, you need to be more responsible with those things because they're because they've done nothing but hurt people. Brainy scowled. I'm trying to improve Starlight with my creation. It seems to it seems to me that you're you're just trying to show off. This got Brainy very angry. My machines are way are way more impressive than you. You're just a thermal blanket infinity plucked from outer space. At least I'm actually helping Plux and not just flaunting my technology. It was dead at the point. It was dead. It was dead at this point that Brainy snapped. I bet this wouldn't like you so much if your face was was bashed in. He picked up a rock and prepared to strike it against the Black Knight. But the robot blasted up into the sky before Brainy could strike. As Brady watched the Black Knight fly away, he decided that he would force Starland, no, not, no, all of Nvidia, to bow down to his machines. He was the most brilliant might, uh, might in this world, and nobody recognized the fact that that fact, except for him, that had to change. Realizing that the Black Knight was most likely going to, to, going to report this whole thing to King Cepheus and Queen Cassiopeia, Brady decided it was best to leave Starland. He quickly went back to his house, packed up all of his blueprints and spare parts, and hopped into the small helicopter he, of course, built himself. Once he was outside the waters of Starland, he got, he got out of the helicopter and scouted the area for any potential places to station himself while he worked on bigger and better in, in, in inventions to conquer Infidia with. Soon, he ran to a certain blue rumpus and took a step back. Oh my gosh! Are are you? Yep, Diaz. Of course, she'd be hiding out uh, in, in in this unexplored forest. It was for the same reason he come here. After all, what better place was there to hide after becoming a fugitive? So, what are you what are you doing here? Asked Diaz. I bring Brainy's helicopter. I came here to work on my inventions in peace, answered a wary Brainy. I... Uh, really? Uh, really? Well, I have you. No, I've been snooping around Starland and saw, and saw some of your work. Perhaps this... Uh, perhaps there is a good use for your creations. Brainy knew the, where this was going, though he couldn't help but ask, What are you proposing? If you join... Uh, if you join me in darkness, we'll make sure in everyone in the out knows how much of a genius you are. Brainy had to say. Uh, Brainy had already been planning, uh, already been planning to conquer Infinity himself, but he didn't mind serving someone else as long as his brilliance was finally recognized. Okay, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make every block know the true power of my machines. Six, six. Six, six. Gold and silver were walking through the through the lush and beautiful forest, arms inter intertwined. Sunlight, the sunlight streams through the through the treetops and make the couple's metal bodies shine. For a short while, well, for a short while, everything everything felt right with the world. However, this quickly changed when all of a sudden, tall mushrooms sprouted out of the ground and surrounded the uh, and surrounded the. The royals releasing their spores. Gold and silver ha uh, held their breaths, fearing what the, what the spores might do for them. What it might do to them. But luckily for them, the mushrooms grew tall enough to be spotted from outside the woods, and the Kemplock who ran forth to save the duo was arsenic, who was immune to poison due to being poisonous herself. There, she parted. Uh, she parted the mushrooms and grabbed uh, and grabbed onto Gold and Silver's arms, pulling them back, uh, pulling them both to safety. As the three walked out of the heart together, a few other camp blocks arrived to make to make sure their leaders were all right. Thank you for saving. Thank you for sa Thank you so much for saving us, Arsenic. Exclaimed Silver. But why didn't you? Well, but why did those mushrooms sprout in the first place? Just that a blast of magic hit Silver in the back, causing Gold to cry out in horror. Who did that? Eat. 
<laughs> Did I, he demanded and got his answer when a gray kemlock with bat wings flew out of the woods. She wore a uh, she wore a, a necklace with three charms dangling off of it. A broken heart, a mushroom, a, and a crescent moon. Here I am! exclaimed Ashi. Gold and silver are going down! She fired another blast that hit gold and s- the, the, the he got and sent him falling backward and sent him falling backwards. Several cat blocks came up right to uh, came up to bite her, but she fluttered out of their reach, laughing as plat as Platinum tried to swing her arm uh, swing her sword at her. What why are you doing this? shouted Platinum. And where did you get that necklace? It's time for Catlan to have a new ruler. And with the power of these charms, that ruler will be me. As for this necklace, I made it myself, including the charms. In fact, let me show you what the broken heart can do. The charm in question glowed as she shot another blast at Platinum, who deflected it with her sword. Beryllium, do something! Aluminum cried Aluminum. Uh, but she's so high up! Beryllium thought for a moment, then used the idea she could come up she could come up with. She threw her sword like a like a frisbee, and hit as and it hit Ashi. Square in the face, rendering her uh, her unconscious unconscious and breaking her to the ground. Peronius' mouth was wide open, shocked that it had actually worked. Beside her, Illumina left a bit. Guess that's my way to take out a villain. XXX. When. <clears throat> XXX. When Ashi awoke, she found herself in a dark prison cell. Moonlight was, was streaming in. It was streaming in through through a small window with three bars. She flew up to it, thinking she could break out, uh, break out the way a blast of magic. But to her horror, she she found that her necklace had been taken away from her. She sat down in despair, knowing that she had failed. But what was about? But what was to happen to her now? Would she stay in? Would she stay in here forever? While the wallowing in her own hatred and mis misery. That a thought occurred to her that made her start, that made her start to panic. She had just tried to usurp the rulers of Kemland, which was a huge act of treason, and the camp and the camp block who portrayed their people receiving the most, received the most terrible punishment of the all, having their Kemland removed. As every camp block knew, that losing your Kemland meant losing your losing your very identity. So, and, and having no and, and having no memory of who you are or what element you stand for, Gold hated to have Gold hated having to resort to such an action. But it was necessary in cases like this, as it was easier to try rehab the, the, the rehabilitating the, the, the rehabilitating someone who for who forgot their crimes and motives. Ashi's breathing grew frantic as her whole body trembled. How would she manage to escape if someone real, uh, really did come to take her company away? The arsenic camp block began to tear up, realizing that there was no way out of this, or so she thought. Uh, as out of a shadowy corner stopped a certain lumpus, who tapped on one of Ashi's wings to get her attention. Ashi jumped a, a little bit at the, uh, the, at the sudden touch, and when she turned around to see Diaz, her jaw dropped. Diaz, how did you get in here? I can go anywhere with my new powers, Diaz said privately. I saw what happened earlier. I saw what happened earlier. It looks like you're really dead on the, you're, you're really dead set on taking the, the throne of Kemlan. Ah, she over her eyes. That girl's been killed. Well, don't give up now, Diaz told the Kemblot before pulling, you know, pulling, a familiar, pulling out a familiar necklace. I could give this back to you and let you blast your way out of this place within seconds. Please do, Ashi begged. Ashi begged, trying to grab her necklace so she could do just that. Not so fast, Diaz held an arm out to stop Ashi. If you want this thing back, you're going to have to join Darkness. Ashi hesitated for a second, then realized this was her only opportunity to escape. After all, she desperately needed to leave if she was indeed to get her chem lane removed. Okay, but just one question. Well, will he allow me to rule Kim Land after he takes over Finia? Of course he will, Diaz promised. This was all that the power-hungry Ashi needed to hear. Exercise. I'm so sorry. 
But this, but this is for your own good. October slammed the, just slammed the door closed. Lucky uptight. Behind the door, magic around. Is it, you're just afraid of what I could do with my new magic. No, I'm afraid of you hurting people because this new magic has made you go crazy. October, the Hulk told her. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find a way to fix this. Please don't try to leave. The, the core of Muth Block ran off, leaving his offshoot behind. Magic powdered. Sure, she, she got a bit over, overboard after learning all those dark spells. But attacking a few other blocks was so bad, right? After all, she needed to prove her, how powerful of a witch she was. She thought October would be impressed, but instead he was scared of her, which was pretty ironic considering the holiday he represented. Despite October telling her not to not to try escaping, Magica still tried to blast the walls off of the room, wanting to leave so she could play with her dark magic. Elsewhere, when Diaz materialized inside the room, she was greeted with a blast to the face, knocking her backwards. Oh, who are you? said asked Magica, not bothering to apologize for accidentally hurting this rhombus. Do you know who I am? asked the surprised Diaz. Maybe I do. It's kind of hard to remember things right now. Darkness was right, thought Diaz. Too much of his magic really, really can mess up the mind of a regular block. Nevertheless, Diaz went went forward with her offer. You know, those are Darkness's powers you you discovered. T cool Heck yeah and, and and you could learn and you could learn even more dark spells if you if you come with me. Where are we going? To meet with Darkness. You want to get out of here, right? Of course I do. Let's go. Well Well, this had been easy. Magica's instability was concerning, though, but she'd probably get a better rip on herself in time. Long after Diaz and Magica left the room, October came rushing in. Magica, I think I've found a way to fix... He paused when he saw the, the room was empty. Oh no, where has she gone? End of story! Yay! We finally did it! After 37 minutes... We finally reached the end of another extra story of the Warner Blocks. Hooray! Oh my gosh. And that's how each and every single one of the Dark videos has joined the dark side of Nvidia. So thank you all for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. And that's the end of another episode of Warner Blocks. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another new episode. But stay tuned for a new episode of Moshi Monster Mario V as well as the return of Sad Real Character Origins. So stay tuned for that. I can't believe it. You did not want to miss it. For now, anyways guys. Uh, if, 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 see how they, uh, I have I'm I'm out there. Then go check out the playlist featuring past story here on the World of Box. I'll leave a link to it on the top corner of the screen. You can just go watch it right now. However, all these must go to end. I want to thank you all for watching today. I'm your guys, you yourself, and I will see you next time on the World of Blocks. Next time, I can't believe it. We're starting up a brand new story next time. Uh, tomorrow we're starting up a brand new story called the World of Blocks. That's right. It's Mr. Numbers and Little Letters, and we start tomorrow with the prologue. That's right. A new beginning here on the World of Blocks. Mr. Numbers and Little Numbers begins tomorrow. This is where the Mr. Man and Little Miss is and the Lloyd Bus collide. So please stay tuned for that. You said I want to miss it. We'll see you tomorrow for the start of our brand new story here on the World of Blocks. The Mr. Numbers and Little Letters. For now, thanks for watching. Until tomorrow, I'm Begon Sanchez. Please remember to leave a like, share this video with your friends, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, turn on notifications and don't miss a new video. Please subscribe and don't forget to turn on so don't miss another new video from me as well on the road. To 500 subscribers. Thank you all for watching. Have a great today and stay tuned for Moshi Monsters Fire Can be as every good watches. Come out later today. I'll be God Sanchez. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll see you in another video. Laters.